This is our second wrap up this month. If you've missed our first wrap up, it'll be linked down in the description box below. Emma or Euphemia, she decides she doesn't want to be called Emma, her nickname anymore. So Euphemia and I are here today to discuss our wrap up of this month's reading. We completed Historathon that kind was of. hosted, kind of, that was hosted by Angie the Science Gal and Amanda the Curly Reader. A book set in the place you have visited and yours was uh, the Gymnastic Gabrielle Douglas. Yes, Gymnastic and mine Gymnastic. was Anathema. Yeah. Which was in Indiana. Um, a book by a diverse author, which was also, also the same. And my Libra faith is actually was. I'm it. going down like this. There are little prompts that they have. Somebody kindly posted that on Instagram, so I'm using theirs because <laughs> I didn't want to go find it. So. I got like halfway through the month and then I realized this is a fiction horror historic this, okay this is historathon this is a fiction historathon and I had two books here that were nonfiction. <laughs> so for a book by a diverse author I had hidden figures this is the young readers edition by Margaret Lee Sh Sh Shutterly Shutterly and I had this one, and I finished it, and then realized, um, well, I, I realized it before I finished reading this one, and I was like, you know, this is going to bug me at the end of the month, and I'm just going to be like, oh, well, I didn't meet the prompt because it was a nonfiction. So I picked up a, another book that um, is a historic, historical. I first picked up this one and then realized this is contemporary not historical, so I have this one on my shelf. It's MPO, An American Indian Odyssey by Jimmy Kiwater. So I have two here because I was determined to make sure that I meet that prompt. First of all, this one, I have to admit, I was kind of bored. <laughs> a lot of this book, I was, I was really bored. I didn't think that it gave a lot of information about the screen woman, Katherine Johnson. Um, oh my goodness, I can't remember. Dorothy Vaughn, Katherine Johnson, Mary Jackson, and this is Christine Darden, but I don't even remember Christine Darden at all. So, that's awkward. Um, but this is kind of how these women back in the... During World War II, Dorothy Vaughn was kind of employed at NASA. It was actually originally NACA there. It wasn't NASA. But um, she was employed by them, and they kind of... Um, she rose in her status. Then there was the whole civil rights thing and we got a lot of the civil rights information even during World War II about this time. It was more about um, what Dorothy Vaughn had to go through in order um, to just have that position. Like it's not very common. Blacks were not treated very well and so even though she had this position like she had her, home, her own East West West Wing, East Wing, even that I'm a little fuzzy about which which wing it was, um, and it's mainly because of the TV show West Wing. So then I'm like, okay, was it West Wing or was it the East Wing? Because am I confusing it with the West Wing? So all that to say, again, I found it actually very dry. It read very much like a book that was written so that kids could um, write papers from. Is what it felt like. So I I just didn't find it engaging. So I would like to uh, watch the movie. I think I would really like the movie, um, but the mo the book I I really didn't find all that interesting. And then so I picked up Ampeo, which is a Newbery Honor book. This was back in 1977, I believe. Yes, and it is written by Jamaica Highwater. Now there, this is basically all of the American Indian tales brought together so that you have their whole history um, from the beginning of creation to um, basically how everything came about. And Ampeo is a fictionalized character of all of basically bringing all these stories together. Kind of like Homer's Odyssey. Um, the author, Jimmy Kiwater, is I was reading this and I was just getting really 
there was just something that wasn't sitting right. And so I did some research on the author and he's even debated as to being a true Native American, American Indian, but he's even debated as to his real heritage or lineage. Some say he is actually originally a Jewish. So there is that whole thing and because of that there is also a lot of um, outrage over this book. He has basically a whole essay on the end about this book and he cl and his biggest thing is I don't want you to take this as myth. I want you to take it as accuracy even though our main character Anna Peo is completely fictionalized for the whole entire thing. So he and and he says in these notes that basically um, I make my own reality. So that really wasn't what really bothered me about this book. Um, if this is a middle grade read, there is a lot of language in here for a 1977 book. There is also at one point, Dear Woman, um, Anna Peo is around a campfire. He's going to the son, to his father, um, to his father the son, basically to get permission to marry the woman of his dreams. But now he's around a campfire and there's this bedazzling woman named Dear Woman, sorry Emma, and basically she chooses another man in, in the circle and he goes off with her into the darkness of the night. You know what's coming. But then the next morning you hear the cry of the mother wailing and you go and they all rush and they see this um these this Native American man that went with Deer Woman brutally murdered. <laughs> um can you go get me a cup of coffee? Why don't you, I'll just just go get me a cup of coffee. I meant like leave for a minute. He's brutally murdered. He's lying naked. Basically after they made love, uh, she bashed his head in with a uh, rock and then with her deer hooves trampled love making parts and crushed them. And the whole, what that whole section signified was a note here which was be careful of woman because I got into another part that I made me but basically when, this is what women do they trample us to death with their love and their passion they entice us and then they trample us to death which was the whole purpose of what dear woman did I was like, what? so I'm kind of irritated that this was um, something that is read in the schools and even then, it's it, there's just a lot in here that even some of the Greek mythology, which is not always clean. I mean, Medusa, Medi Medusa. Well, I think Medusa too, but Medea, like that, I didn't read till much later, not middle school. So yeah, this this got a one star for me, but that did knock off. The prompt a actually knocked off two prompts for me um, a book by a diverse author so even if his lineage is not Native American it is Jew so we're gonna go with that it also knocked off name in the title because I am a lala was also a nonfiction so I've talked long enough about that a book with no people on the cover I get she read Pride and Prejudice. Except I did the audiobook version. Doesn't but... matter. It's still being read. Oh my goodness, this book. This was so good. I, 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 I liked it. And now, I watched the movie with... She watched the inferior movie. Here at Nightly. And that one is my favorite. Sorry. Still continuing <sighs> watching the other one. Julia will never speak to you again if you do not like this Pride and Prejudice. And I will never speak to you again if you do. You said if I made you coffee this morning, you would talk to me. This is true. With coffee, all is forgiven. Okay, anyway, so pretty much everyone knows what Pride and Prejudice is about. 
<laughs> about the main character, Elizabeth or Lizzie, and she kind of goes through her life, how she meets a prideful man named Darcy, and I gotta say something after this book, but, and how they go together, how they start to, like, slowly, slowly bond together more, and... Bond? Fall in love, I think is the word. <laughs> yeah, I guess. And then, at the end, they get married. Ah! Sorry. I love it. So, I read that, and a book I'm currently reading, which is called Maggie's War by Terry Todd, uh, I just picked this up because I thought it was going to be, my mom said my grandma, my grandma said it was okay to read, it was like Christian, so I started reading it, and that is going to be a five star for me, it is so, so good, and the one girl in here, her name's Charlotte, she had a daughter, or her son, and she named him Darcy after Pride and Prejudice, and I thought that was pretty cool, so. I really and Maggie's like War would also fit a prompt. Yes. A historic song, but I don't think, I think it has a person on the cover, but. Well. She's looking out the window. It's a person. You can't see her face. It's, it's a person. Lips. It's a person. But this one has no people on the cover. Yeah, that's. Well, this, that's what the Which that was, was really a really hard prompt to fit. I think everybody, yeah. everything I have has people on the cover. Um, Even if they are like. For me, what I have to do with that one is our Yellow Bird Sings, which was our group read. There is no people on the cover. There was an excellent discussion last night about this book. And oh, <laughs> I think this was like two stars. This was one star. So, anyway, and this is like three stars. It's not that I disliked it, but the <laughs> I skimmed a lot of the first half. Anytime, so the premise of this book, I had never heard of this book before until the readathon, until it was chosen as our um, group read. I had never heard of it, and. Shira and Rosa, I think, um, are hiding in Hen Henry's barn, or um, they're hiding in Henrik's barn, and Shira is five years old, and Rosa is like 25, and um, they're hiding from the Nazis, and so they're just under the cover of this barn, so they have to be quiet. They can't make noise. Only the farmer and his wife know that they're there, and... The yellow bird comes in, basically, Shira tell, or Rosa tells Shira, the five-year-old, that, hey, there is a yellow bird, and he's only, you know, he'll only um, be able to tell you these things, or the girl is forbidden from making a sound, so the yellow bird sings. He sings whatever the girl composes in her head. The high-pitched trills of a piccolo, low-throated growls of a contrabassoon, Music helps the flowers grow. And so basically, as long as she's quiet, this bird can take the thoughts from her head and compose this music. And this is a very musical book. Um, I think it would make an excellent audiobook because I think it should have music throughout it, kind of like Echo. But there is a price to be paid for being in this barn. And anytime Henrik started climbing those stairs, I skimmed pages because I, I was done. I kind of like, is this going to go? And it did. And I just, I don't want to read that. And there are a lot of trigger things in here. There is a lot of hardships in here. So I think that should be a warning for anybody reading this book that um, there will be some harshness. Now, at some point, they're not safe up in this barn anymore. And so there is, you know, the, a decision has to be made. You can't stay up in this barn for this whole world war. And so decisions are made, and then what happens after that, it just gets even harder. But to be honest, it kind of got disconnected for me at that point. Um, I felt like I skimmed a lot more. And just... <sighs> I don't know. I don't really know. It just didn't pull me. I will say I did like the ending. 
it's not it's not an ending that a lot of people liked but I actually really liked the ending so it, it and it's hard to kind of like how much do you talk about this book without giving things away you're fine so anyway three stars and moving on from that one so what do you have a uh, people with a book with no people on the cover which we just did that was this oh, one okay next one is a multi-generational book okay that which, was yours go ahead oh this book legacy of honor i pronounced it right like legacy yes. <laughs> legacy, legacy. Of honor. this book was I so good my mom read it my mom wrong. i'm the mom my mom read it and let me go like this. My mom read it and thought I would enjoy it, so I picked it up. I started reading it. The beginning part was pretty sad. Her brother's dead, or they're at the funeral. That like that. Well, if we have that one, we're fine. Okay. Uh, her mother's at the funeral, or the daughter Emma is at the funeral, and she is like really sad, like her life has kind of fallen apart as she says and so she now has to care for her father and her brother her father has like asthma kind of but it's really really bad so he has a hard time working the farm so she then has to provide for the family which means she has to get money which means she goes to the Stratton Ranch, that's the word, Stratton Ranch, to go work because her because her mother used to work at the Stratton Ranch. As she a housekeeper. Thought maybe they would herself. hire her. Yeah, so she went there, she got the job, and the one guy there, Riley, they were childhood friends, that's the word. They were childhood friends, and so she knows him but kind of ignores him and then they oh my gosh I just want to say the end nope <laughs> so bad anyway so it's kind of like a s slowly very slowly getting together type of thing because they kind of ignore each other and then they slowly grow together and how Riley left his father because his father was kind of how do I say it? Like his father it. had very um, opinionated ideas yeah. for money and wealth and proper breeding. I spoil it. There's a f you are spoiling it. Ah! So then circumstances happen and. It's like, will they ever get together or not? Because now these circumstances yeah. come into play. You're still spoiling it. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Why? I just want to say the end there's, so well. there's, there's also a brother in the picture. Oh my god. Okay, then Riley's other brother. What is his name? The brother. The scallywag. The, the who, scallywag. Yeah, he likes to drink a lot. And he has a daughter who is part African American. Nope. No? Native American. Native American. Native American, <laughs> sorry. Native American who has a Native American daughter. And he is so drunk he can't really care for her. So Emma decides to take her in in the how into the Stratton house but remember ranch. the kid's grandfather the father is very into high breeding and so the Riley's dad I'm gonna say that Riley's dad doesn't like that there is an African American or Native American a Native American in his house so he wants to kick her out so Emma decides to take her to, take her to her house Take her into the wing. Yeah, and then... And the circumstances just fall into place. So that was multi-generational. My multi-generational, I am about halfway through. I am reading Fathers and Sons by Ivan Targanet. 
Targanev. I first heard about this on the literary podcast. They did a New Year's Eve special and then lit the next month when I was driving my sister down to the airport I stopped at a thrift store and this was on the shelves and I had never I see classics all the time and I had never seen this before and I thought it was so interesting that right after I learned about this book it's there on the shelves it's like hey you need to read me but classics are hard to read and Russian classics are even more hard to read however this one is not as hard to read as some Russian classics this is not Brothers Karamazov. However, um, the premise of the book is kind of the the tale of every generation, right? You have parents that think their ways are the best ways, and then the next generation of kids that just want nothing to do with the ways of the parents. It's just progress, the future, and the parents are like hold to the old ways. And so you have Alyssa Father and um, uh, oh gosh, it starts with an A. Uh, Arkady? Arkady? Uh, it doesn't tell me on the back. I think it's Arkady or Arkady. Arkady. Um, father and son basically kind of clashing. So Arkady brings home his friend Bazarov, which is that man. He's a, a nihilist and just basically he, his way is the, the right and proper way and he denounces anything that is moral and um, philosophical and anything. Just live live with no morals. Live making your own reality kind of thing. And this was written in 1860, I think. Um, 1862. And it made me think... Actually, it didn't make me think. It I when I was listening to the literary podcast, Thomas, the guy that's on there, was talking about how, you know, people reading this, the contemporaries reading this book, would then be in two generations the people that were the communists in Russia, and that to me, and then reading the ideas of this day was just really eye opening. Um, insofar as like brilliant writing or anything else you've got the older generation you know think of Pride and Prejudice where they're just kind of lounging about so proud in their um, aristocracy and in traditions in this wise I mean Nicholas has a mistress and um, his brother is just very proud at not doing anything and so you're like well that's not right so it's kind of a wasteful life but then you have the younger generation that is just coming up and basically um doing away with everything and basically wanting to live a very wasteful life themselves but in a completely different way in terms of terminology so it's it's kind of interesting to see that aspect of it but and this is only i'm about halfway through so I will not finish this tonight, so I, I will like to finish this, and I will be working on this, but I will not finish this in time for the wrap-up of the Historathon, but um, yeah, it I, I'm i finding this really interesting. I would probably only give it three stars just because in terms of engaging and, like, it's just, it's just there, and it was making a statement, and it made, like, a, a, a radical reaction back in the day when it was published just because of how both sided was kind of more or less attacked. So I thought that was interesting. But um, yeah, you know, it is what it is. There's that one. Set in winter. Set. And I have two actually. I didn't know this one was set in winter, but I'm going to read both of them today. Lucky me. I have The Snow Queen and Other Winter Tales. I just read the first first section which is about that long snow queen it's about 28 pages mm -hmm. of the snow queen mm -hmm. and I'm only gonna do the snow queen and then maybe try to do the rest in December because it's winter so going to try to finish that one I only have a couple more pages left so. okay so that one 
and I have Aiming for Love, which I only have like 20 more pages left, so I'm yeah, going like, to finish this. What um, do you think of this? Oh my goodness, it's so good. It's a Christian romance. Fic Christian fiction romance, that's the word. And that's like my favorite genre, genre so far. And It was mine too when I was your age. And Oh my gosh, I love this book. I can't give all my thoughts on it, but probably should talk why, about it. Why do you... What would the book have to do to make you dislike it? Probably the sister. Her her name is Ursula. She's always scared of outsiders because she's never met any outsiders. They're up in the mountains. She, the sister doesn't like outsiders, which means when these outsiders come into the cabin with them because the one David, the other main character, David's father gets a bullet wound, that's the word, they have to get him into a cabin because they're, the winter is coming, so they go into the cabin and suddenly um, David's brother spikes a fever and they think he has smallpox, later they find he doesn't, but the sister is scared of disease because she, her grand, no, Someone died. A lot of them died from, like, fever. A lot of her related family members had died from fever. I can't, you guys can't see it. Died from fever. And so she's scared of any sickness. So she's like, I don't want to be with you guys. I'm going to go far away from you guys so I don't have to see you. And she, her sister keeps telling her that what would God want her to do? She looks like the nurse from um, One Calls the Heart. Not Claire. Um, I know what you're talking about. No. The one no, that comes doesn't. in. Yes, she does. No, she does not. The the one that Elizabeth keeps thinking yeah. that Jack is interested in, but yeah. she was engaged to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking it about. Looks like her. No. Okay. Anyway, yeah, so her sister's her this Joe. I'm gonna say her name's Joe. Joe was like, what would you think God would want us to do? And the sisters was still really angry, like, but I don't want to get us sick, and because you're not obeying my rules, I'm going to leave you guys, and you can deal with our now sick sister that now has the disease that David's brother had. So. Abandonment. Yeah. I'm going to try to finish this one. This one, I have two books. So that one's set in winter books set in winter but this could also kind of be for a book that is about a war that's not world war ii what war civil war interesting this, see but it was like a couple years ago that it happened but but it's they, still they mentioned civil war and so it's still on the heels of the yes. civil war okay. so all right well for my book set in Winter, I read The Red Ribbon by Pepper Basham. This is my first Pepper Basham. She is a Christian author. And this is about the Appalachian feud that led to a courthouse shooting. And my mom did warn me about Pepper Basham and, and her passionate kisses. And oh my goodness, thanks for the warning. There's also guns and shooting and feuds and all that kind of stuff. <laughs> There's I don't I wouldn't I wouldn't mind if you read this it was a three star read for me I did give it four stars on Goodreads and like the more I'm thinking about it I'm just I don't remember too much about it so for me it's not sticking with me so I would say that would drop down to a three star read what oh I thought it said book three and I was like true colors so, True Colors is a whole set of books that basically they take these crimes that really happen and then just kind of weave a story about it. So this is set in winter, it's set in December, when they are shucking corn um, up here in the Appalachians, which I would have like, well, that's a little bit late, but no, actually that happens up here. Um, they have to wait for it to dry out and all this kind of stuff when they um, um, cut it down. And even up here, like... They were still cutting wheat and corn down in December up here. I thought that was really interesting, but that's what they do. 
in my mind I'm always thinking that this needs to be done in like September and October but it's not. I feel like I should be able to tell you more about this book but I don't. There's a main character and there's a boy and there's love. I do remember the courtroom shootout but basically because of this feud back and forth there is um like which side is the lawn and that kind of comes into play and even within the courtroom it's like who's doing what and it has to do with like there's moonshining going on and our main character is trying to figure out and basically stop this but you have to figure out whose side the law is on kind of thing so it's it's a lot about that and it makes me think of a little bit of like Christy and some of the stuff that she was dealing with with that and so that kind of brought in some different things but um, all in all in the book I think I would have liked less of the romance part of it and more of the story part but I don't know that Pepper Basham could could really do much more than what she did to be honest because again we weren't there and this is also based on real events so you kind of want to keep it true but since we don't know like what can you do so I will give grace for that but um yeah I, I did enjoy it but it didn't stick with me so that's what I can tell you. that's what I can share with you so that took place in winter a book that is about a war that is not World War II and then so that will this will take your place of a war that's not Civil war. World War II mine is World War One, but this is dual timeline this is the Girl You Left Behind by Jojo Moyes. And this takes place during World War One, Paris or France, World War One, and present day London. So I really liked The Giver of the Stars by Jojo Moyes. I have not read anything else by Jojo Moyes, so this was my second one. And this was a 2.5 three stars. I loved reading about World War One with Sophie did not like our present day character at all. Present day character is mourning the loss of her husband who died four years ago and when we op when we get to her story she's drunk, she's miserable, she's upset, she's angry. Um, she escapes a double date or blind date and brings in a character into her home. The char she learns that this um, other girl basically is sleeping at her job because she doesn't have a place. So she's like, "I'll you can just come to my place." Turns out her place is like this elaborate home that her husband built, and in this place is this painting from World War One of Sophie. So the night, so she decides to go to a bar and get drunk. She goes to a gay bar because nobody will bother her there. And there are two brothers there and the one brother runs the bar because well he would know but the other brother um, basically sees this woman that is drunk on the floor she's not making her bills elaborate home not making her bills so he takes her home she throws herself on him but he turns around and walks out thank you Jesus but he comes back with her purse and this cash that she needed and um, she shows gratitude. Turns out he is basically, he restores artwork. So because of the, the Geneva Convention, which gave the World War II recipients the rights to their artwork back that the Nazis stole. This is the first one that goes back to World War One, and he's in her bedroom and he sees that she has the painting. So now there's like this conflict of interest. And so basically her, her story is about what turns into a lawsuit of this painting and how she got it and if this other people rightfully own it and it's of course it's world war one so did the germans really steal it and there's all of this that goes back and forth and their relationship between it all so the first hundred and first hundred and twenty pages ish is about sophie and how this painting came about 
and what she did to protect this painting from this German commandant who basically ends up staying at their bar hotel place. So that was interesting. Um, that had a lot of Nightingale vibes with the two sisters, one being more cautious and she, she's just kind of we'll do what we need to do to survive kind of way. So there was a little bit of that and I really did prefer Sophie's story even though it took a twist that I was hoping it wouldn't and you kind of know that it's going to. You, you definitely know like I'm not spoiling anything there. But there was a hope of me that it wouldn't. So after all of that it just the whole star rating just dropped for me. It was like okay all right whatever and I just didn't like our present day character. Even at the end she is still selfish. She is still just a miserable person. There's nothing to like about her and so it was just a disappointment all around for me. So that's what I have for a book that's not about World War One or World War Two. it's about World War One. A book with a person's name and the title. Again I did NPO um, but I originally read this one which is I Am Alala and I really enjoyed this one. I was kind of worried that I wasn't going to after reading Hidden Figures but I really enjoyed this one and I found it really fascinating. Um, just kind of her story of becoming the, the poster child for women's education in the Middle East. And then um, after her story of being shot and what they did for to basically keep her alive was really fascinating and I don't I'm not a medical type of person but I found this one really interesting so I recommend this one I do I did read the young readers edition and I found it really interesting I did um, go and do a comparison like people comparing the young readers with the um, the original or the older readers <laughs> um, one and they were saying that the older, the, the non-Young Readers edition um, just has more of the politicalness of it all in there. And so I actually think that would have been a little bit more interesting in there. Um, but this is just cut and dried, her story, cut to the chase, and all of that. So I, I thought it was really good and I think you would enjoy it. History book. So, okay. And then I think we both just have one more book. Wait, what is this one for? That one was for a book with a person's name in the title. I have Belle's story. Belle. Belle. Ugh. Here we so go. So I found this at Always, and I thought it was going to be like a, just a read and get rid of, but this, it has like different sketch sketches. Well, go ahead and talk about it. And sketches, I'll just... but it also has like different clips from the movie. And I thought really, really fascinating. And in the back, you can actually draw. And that's all of her like, father's ideas that he got. So, like, one of his inventions was, like, from mm -hmm. Italy and France. And anyway, so... You keep talking about it. I'm just going to show... I just thought it was a really, like, nice story about Belle. And with all the pictures in it, it was maybe, like, an hour read for me. But I really liked it, so I like that part. Oh, this is like so when she teaches the one little girl how to read. And a little note. I thought that was a cute little story. So this is gonna be uh, cute for me. I think my sister would really like it too when she's a little older. So and that one. I just have another book that I finished this month, which was The Weeds That String the Hangman's Bag by Alan Bradley. This is a Flavia de Luce mystery, and this is book two, and Flavia is nine or ten. So you, it's not a middle grade book, but it kind of feels like it sometimes just because you're, it's being told from her perspective. And so, but she is a very smart girl she has a passion for poisons and um likes to do a lot of chemistry and things like that and she keeps stumbling into these mysteries and so this is book two and again like book one it had a very slow beginning for me 
and then I just didn't want to put it down. So um, I think I gave this one 3.5 stars and they tend to be 3 to 3.5 for me. They tend to be, I've only read two, but I think both of them have been 3, 3.5. Um, so that was the last book that I read. It's I'm like, but where are all my books? Because uh, some of these I'm not going to keep. Like, I probably won't keep these. I think you would enjoy these. I probably won't keep Hidden Figures. If you guys want to read it, you can check it out in the library. But I'm not going to force you to read that. Um, definitely not keeping that one. And I'd like to finish this. I don't know if I'll keep this one when I'm done. I think my husband would like to read this at some point. But again, it's... Uh, it's, it's a classic. And this needs to go back to the library. It's a classic. It's a classic. That's enough said. Oh, and I'm halfway through Anna by, no, A Step from Heaven by Anna. This is, um, it's not told in free verse, but it's kind of told. Like a free verse. Like, yeah, it's just told in these little, it's told from her perspective as a five-year-old. And then I think we're going to get through like her whole years, maybe more like journal entries, but, um, mature general gen, journal entries it, it's okay i i don't expect to really like this one either it's it's just there it's okay um the dad's an abuse abusive korean man and they're having some trouble coming from korea i think yeah coming from korea to the united states and getting established here but even still, some of the, it's not really that's not really talked about. It's not talked about their life here. It's just talked about her family that lives in the United States and her family that's messed up. But they were messed up back in Korea, so it's it's just there. And I don't know. That's what it is. Sorry, reading the other book. She's still reading. Okay, so. my friends, that's it for this video. And until next time, have another cup of coffee or tea and, and read, read another, another chapter. chapter. Bye.